There are a few dishes as quintessentially Georgian as kachupuri being served up here in this restaurant in Moscow. There's also a bar offering wine from South America, Australia and Europe, but none from Georgia. It's been off the menu since 2006 when Moscow introduced a ban on Georgian mineral water and wine. The clients want quality Georgian wine. There is a demand for it, so we're waiting to find out what happens. Georgia has a long history of making wine and exporting it, always previously managing to find plenty of customers. At one time, Russia was the biggest market for Georgian wine. But when the ban was introduced, foreign sales of Georgian wine fell by around 80%. Slowly and surely, though, Georgia has managed to rebuild its industry. It's found new markets for its products in Europe, the US and China, but still has a significant way to go to get back to the market share it had before the embargo. Russia brought in the ban, citing concerns about quality, but Georgia claimed the move was politically motivated, and it signalled a deterioration in relations between Moscow and Tbilisi over the disputed territory of South Ossetia. The relationship has barely recovered, but after a meeting in Moscow, it seems relations may be thawing when it comes to wine and water. I think we can say that we agreed to resume our commercial partnership and trade relations between the two countries. It is difficult to forecast it in numbers at the moment. We have different expectations. It can be something starting with 10 million bottles a year. I wouldn't forecast anything yet. Let's see how Georgian companies will manage their marketing campaigns in Russia. If imports do resume, Russia may find the Georgian wine industry much changed. Supporters say the quality has sharply improved and there are fewer counterfeit products available. And there is still here, at least, a taste for Georgia. Emma Haywood, Al Jazeera, Moscow.